studying again our teeth as well as the animal's teeth. How about this sound? Do you guys know what this animal is? Do you recognize that sound? That's a rooster. All right. So we will be starting here in just a minute. I think we're almost ready. Get started. All right, let's get started. Again, welcome everyone. My name is Debbie and we're at the Math Science Nucleus. And today we have a special program for you in celebration of Earth Day that's coming up. Now our program today is all about carnivores, herbivores and omnivores. Basically, we're gonna be studying teeth, all right? So if anybody has any extra questions at the end of class, or if your teachers can't answer them, you can always email us. You see our nucleus, msnucleus.org, or give us a call, and Hagos will usually answer the phones there. And he's also with us today. He's in the background making sure all our computer information is working correctly. And teachers, we will have this recorded so that in a couple of days it'll be online if you have students that are absent or you want to watch it again, you're welcome to. It'll be on the nucleus, that msnucleus.org, on the YouTube channel at the bottom of the page. All right, so let's get started. Carnivores, omnivores, and herbivores. Give me a thumbs up if you see the green grass on your screen. And do you see the giraffe running and the cheetah chasing it? Well, why is the giraffe running away from the cheetah? Oh, because one is an herbivore, a plant eater, and one is a carnivore, a meat eater. All right, so I know we're, we're all connected and you guys can all hear me okay and you can see the screen. So today we're going to be talking about teeth. And this is a funny looking picture of a teeth, of a tooth. Your teeth, all that you have in your mouth, usually you only see the outside part that's all white and that's covered with enamel. Can you guys say enamel? Okay, enamel is harder than bone. Okay, it's a little different than bone. But these teeth are actually attached to your jaw. Now, can you guys feel your bottom jaw? Put your fingers up and feel the bottom jaw. Can you wiggle your bottom jaw? Can your bottom jaw go up and down? Can it go sideways? I'm sitting here watching you guys play with your jaw. Does it go sideways and it goes up and down? Okay, so your jaws and then you have your top jaw. Can you feel your top jaw? Like right under, yeah, you can feel where your cheeks are, that's bone. But then under that is your, you can feel your teeth through your cheeks. You feel that? But right now you guys have your kid teeth. You have your youngest set of teeth. All those teeth are gonna fall out if they haven't started falling out yet. Because up here and down here, you have more teeth waiting. You have two sets of teeth. So you have your baby teeth and then you have your adult teeth. So the adult teeth are down here in the bone that are waiting. They're gonna push those baby teeth up out of the way. Now, if you look at this picture, this is where we've taken a tooth and we've kind of cut it in half so that you can see there are different layers. So that outside enamel is super hard. So when you're chewing things, that's what allows you to crush and chew and, and bite things to make things smaller so that you can digest it, so that you can eat it. But if something breaks that enamel, if something cracks it or you get a cavity, it can get down to that next layer called the dentin. And if it gets down to there, then that's when you start to have a toothache. Sometimes your tooth will hurt if you eat something that's super cold or you drink something cold or bite on it. So if that ever happens, make sure you tell your mom or dad because you probably need to go see a dentist just to make sure there's not a cavity or a tooth that's broken. But under that dentin, then you have the pulp and then you have the roots of the tooth. Now we don't ever get to see those, do we? Because if you look at your teeth, all of our teeth we just see the white part that's above the gum. The pink part is the gum, all right? So we're used to only seeing that top part, but you do have roots of your teeth 
that go down into sockets in the bone. And then you have the nerves and the blood vessels. So has anybody here lost a tooth? Everybody do a big smile for me. I see a smile. I see if anybody's losing any teeth yet. I'm looking. Okay. So you can see from this picture. Now, do you understand why if you lose a tooth, it does bleed because you've got to have blood supply to the tooth tissue to keep it alive, but it only bleeds for a little bit and then it stops. And then the next teeth that come in, they have a little jagged points and that's to help them cut through the gum. Now, this little picture that I have here is same, kind of the same thing. It's just a little more simple, but it shows some of the different layers of the tooth. But if I eat a lot of sugar, and soft foods, and I don't brush my teeth well, I can get a cavity. So if a cavity starts to, if it breaks through the enamel, once it gets down to that dentin and the pulp, oh, that's when I'm gonna have a toothache, all right? So that's why it's so important for you guys to take care of your teeth. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. All right, so as far as teeth go, I already said that you have two different sets of teeth. Look at this diagram um, that has the child in the middle. You don't have very many teeth. Look at the adult side. Boy, they have a lot more teeth. Yeah, so as a, as a kid, your mouth is little. You don't have room for all those teeth yet. So those teeth, again, are waiting down in the bone and up here in the bone. And once you are growing and getting bigger, then those different teeth start to come out. And they all come out at different ages. You know, usually about y'all's age, you start losing some. By the time you're a teenager, you have all your teeth. All right, so we're gonna use our tongue now. Use your tongue in your mouth and feel inside your mouth on the lower jaw. You feel the front teeth? Those front four teeth are incisors. Can you guys say incisors? Yeah, incisors. You'll see the picture on the bottom. They're kind of like a kind of like a shovel, and they're made for kind of cutting, biting. That's what you would use if you were going to bite an apple, take a bite of something. Now, use your tongue and feel around towards the back. Feel those big molars in the back. Can you feel the sides of them? Now feel the top of the molars with your tongue. You feel how those are like a big, like almost like four cups, okay? Now, as you're moving your tongue around on the bottom, can you feel the ones that are spiky? You have some that are more pointed than others. Those are your canines. Let's go to the top now. Let's run your tongue along the top teeth. Ready? Oh, I could definitely feel my pointed one. Can you feel your canines? Those are those right here. See, mine are pointed. So those front four teeth that you have are incisors. Then your canines are the ones that are pointy. They're a little bit longer. And then the ones in the back that are flat for grinding, those are your molars, all right? So we're gonna keep talking about those incisors, canines and molars. Now, later on, you'll see, look at this colored chart. You see the pink ones that are colored? Those are the sharp pointy ones that you felt, okay? Funny thing about when you're working with your mouth and you're using your tongue, your tongue magnifies things. So if, if, if even if you've got like a little piece of corn kernel stuck in your tooth, all of a sudden it feels like it's a giant piece, you know? So it's kind of funny the way your, your tongue works. It helps you digest your food and all that too. But your teeth are also responsible for helping you digest your food, but even for helping you speak. Because if you didn't have teeth, then that would change the way that you would use your um, words. You'd have to use your tongue differently. All right, so later on today, or whenever you get your worksheet, this is the worksheet that you would have, okay? You're going to look at your teeth in a mirror, okay? Just like the bathroom mirror when you go to brush your teeth. You're gonna look at your teeth and answer these questions if you can. 
then you're going to go and ask and talk about your teeth with your parents. Look at their teeth. And if you have grandparents that's there that live with your house, then look at their teeth as well. And then compare to your other brothers and sisters or your friends, because everyone's different. Teeth are very unique. All right. Here's my instructions on what to do with this worksheet. Okay, this is the worksheet that we have for human teeth that you can print off. And the first thing to notice is that the bottom has a key. So you just need to find four colors. They could be um, crayons, they could be markers, anything you want to use. I've got four crayon colors that I've picked out here. And here you can see again, my key is what if I started first. That's the most important. And then according to my key, I started coloring my teeth. So number one are the incisors, the canines, precuspids, and the molars. Okay, so again, if you don't have that sheet yet, don't worry about it. Your teachers will get it to you. And teachers, you can get that from the same place where you registered for class. But all it is is just to get you to Notice the different types of teeth you have. It's just by looking in the mirror. All right, so today we're going to be studying the animals that have teeth in the group called the chordata. And that's the animals that have a backbone. So can you take your two hands and feel the back of your neck? Can you feel the back of your neck? You've got some bones on the back of your neck and you can keep going down a little more. Now reach around and feel your backbone underneath, like on at your back. Can you feel that? When I say chordata, what we're talking about is this backbone. And a lot of times you will see skeletons and all at um, Halloween, but this is a backbone from a deer and you see that these are individual bones, they're vertebrae that are stacked up. And in the middle, it protects all of the main arteries and veins and the nerves, okay? So that's what we call the chordata. It's kind of like a cord. So these are the animals we're going to talk about today that have that backbone. And those are the animals you see circled up here in the green. Reptiles, fish, birds, mammals, and amphibians, all right? So we're gonna talk about all these different animals and how their teeth work. All right, so in looking at these teeth, we've got three skulls here. And these skulls, I can tell as a wildlife biologist what these animals are, first of all, because I've studied it. And also I'm looking at clues. I'm looking at how big the eye orbit is. Can you feel the bone around your eye? Okay, so I'm looking at how big their eyes are. Notice they don't have a nose because wiggle the end of your nose. Your nose is cartilage, that's not bone, okay? All right, so let's look at these teeth. Remember the incisors we talked about, the ones in the very front? Those incisors are colored blue. Can you find them on all the skulls? Are carnivores a meat eater, but it still has incisors. Look, our herbivore is a plant eater, but it only has incisors on the bottom. It doesn't have any teeth on top. Did you know that? It has like a hard plate. So for an herbivore, it's kind of like putting your lip over your top teeth and trying to eat like that. Can you guys do that? Can you put your lip over? That's kind of how a cow would eat. Isn't that funny? But they don't have teeth on top. All right, then the last kind of eater is an omnivore. An omnivore is an animal that eats everything. It eats plants and meat or other animals. So if you look at our omnivores, that's a human skull. And we have the incisors here in the front. So we have them on the top and the bottom. All right, so next, Let's look for our pointy teeth, our canines. So on our carnivore skull at the top, those are colored in orange. You see how sharp those carnivores are. Those canines for a carnivore, 
They're very large and they're sharp and they're made for grabbing and puncturing and tearing. All right, can you find them on the herbivore? They're smaller, they're not as pointy. Can you find them on the omnivore? They're right here. Yeah. Now, what's tricky are the molars. Remember those big flat ones you have in the back? Ones that feel real flat on top? All right, if you look at the carnivore, those molars are colored brown. So they do have molars, but look at all those other, they got lots of other pointy tearing teeth because a carnivore doesn't really chew their food. They just have to tear it and then swallow it. Okay, they don't really chew. Most carnivores can't do that sideways motion. Look at our herbivores. Herbivores are eating plants and grasses. Those are hard to eat. So they have to grind them a lot. That's why they have so many molars. Look at how many molars that herbivore has. So they are grinding that grass. And then even an omnivore, we have felt our teeth in the back right too, right? You feel those? And you see those? And we pulled out one of those molars so you can see that it's kind of like it's got four cuts. If you have even water bottles, sometimes the bottom of a water bottle looks a lot like a molar tooth. But again, remember, we can only see this top part. The rest of this is covered up by our gums that we can't see, okay? Until your tooth falls out, and then sometimes you get to see it. All right, so again, we're gonna look inside a kid's mouth, and this kid is probably a lot like your mouth, but what we're looking at, again, are the different types of teeth. So we're looking at the incisors in the front, the canines, are the pointy ones. And then the molars are in the back. All right, so let's see what happens here. So we're looking at her mouth. She has gone to the dentist. And when you go to the dentist, you sit in a nice comfortable chair and the dentist is using different tools to be able to look at their mouth. So you can see they've got, they're checking out all of the teeth. You see those little incisors there? and only the two molars. And look, now they use a mirror to actually look at the top teeth. They don't have to hang you upside down or they don't have to hang upside down. They can use different tools to look at those teeth. So that's pretty clever the way they do that. And at the end there, they were using kind of a sharp tool to touch on those molars. If those molars are too soft and sticky, that means You've got a cavity and that's where the plaque builds up and it breaks down that enamel. So a lot of times now though, you guys can even, when you go to the dentist, you get sealants put on there. So that even protects your enamel and makes it even more strong, which is pretty cool. If you look at your parents and your grandparents' teeth, they're gonna have lots of kind of silver stuff in there probably. Um, Cause that's just the way we used to do our fillings. Now, this is asking you if you can confuse a tooth with a claw. And this is a cat's claw. I think you could confuse them, right? They're kind of the same shape. For the canine and the claw, they look a lot the same, but there are some differences. A tooth is built in layers. Remember our different layers where we had the enamel on the outside? And then we had the dentin and the pulp. So when you have a tooth, you can actually see layers. This is a tooth from like a donkey. You can see the different layers looking onto it and the, where the enamel is kind of breaking down, all right? But our teeth again are made of enamel, so they're super hard. That claw is made of keratin. It's a protein. Look at your fingernails. Your fingernails are made of the same thing that this cat claw is made out of. And guess what? Pull your hair. Your hair is made of the same thing as your fingernails. And did you even know like a cow's hooves or a horse hooves? Those are also made of keratin. It's a kind of protein. But we can look at past lives to determine how some animals became extinct just by looking at things like these claws and the teeth. That's pretty cool, huh? So at first point, it kind of looks like they could be confused, but 
once you start looking closer and you know more, there you can't confuse them. If you come to the Children's Natural History Museum when we open up, we have a collection where you can see a T-Rex tooth and a Tyrannosaurus Rex claw, but you can see how similar they are. All right, so let's get into our teeth now. Now our carnivores, here you see a bunch of lions and the lions have killed a zebra because those lions have to eat. Remember, they can't go to the grocery store. They can't go to McDonald's. They have to catch their prey. And as you look at that lion's mouth, it's wide open. You see those big canines, those big sharp ones? Okay, those big canines are to help grab and puncture so that they can catch that animal. But look at his mouth, he still has some incisors. Those little ones in the front? How many incisors do you see? I'll give you time to count them. We're counting the little ones in between the pointy ones. How many incisors do you see on top? One, two, three, four, five, six. I see six on top. Let's count the ones on the bottom. Oh, they're even smaller. One, two, three, four, five, six on the bottom too. Is that what you got? Yeah, that one on top's a little yellow looking. That probably, he would probably need to go to the dentist if he was in, a, in the zoo or something. But in the wild, he's just got to give up with that toothache. Now, again, you see the farther teeth in the back are still made for cutting um, back in the back because he doesn't, he just takes chunks of meat and swallows them. Now, look at his bottom canines. Is there anything wrong with his canines? You guys see anything wrong? One of them is broken. Do you think that hurts him? Yeah. Remember we talked about once it gets down into this part, then that's when he's going to feel the pain. So when you break or crack a tooth, oh, you definitely have a toothache. But this lion just has to keep surviving. He lives in the wild. He's got to do the best he can. So it probably is a little tender. He probably chews more on the other side, but that's pretty cool to capture a broken tooth. All right, now we have herbivores. Those are plant eaters. And those plant eaters have teeth that are grinders, meaning that they grind like this. So if you look at this cow, this cow's having a big, nice meal of some long grass. There he's looking at us. You see he's making kind of a mess. Remember, he only has teeth on the bottom. He doesn't have teeth on the top, on the front. He's got those flat grinders in the back, but only on the front. Remember I said to put your lip over your top teeth and then he would eat like this. So next time you eat salad, see if you can tear up a salad leaf with just one row of teeth. That's kind of funny. All right, and the other animal we show there is a hippopotamus. Now, Usually you don't think of a hippopotamus as being a plant eater, but they are. They leave the water at night and they have to eat about 150 pounds of plant material every day to be able to survive. That's a lot of eating of plants, all right? So if you look at their teeth though, they've got these big canines and they do have some little incisors, but you see, look at the open mouth and the way back. They've got all those flat molars, and that's for grinding up the plants that they eat. Now, here's some more herbivores that are chewing. Now, this is kind of funny. So here's our little cow that we had before, and you can see his teeth on the bottom. And again, he's eating a bunch of grass and hay. It's very hard to digest that. So they have to chew it and eat it a lot. In fact, he even has a special stomach called a ruminant where he eats it and then he coughs a little bit back up and he has to eat it again because it takes so long to get the nutrients out of that hay and the grass. Now the picture on top is of a goat. Now a goat does have teeth on the top and the bottom. Look at how its jaw is moving sideways. Can you guys do that? Can you move your jaw the way the goat's moving your jaw? Can you go the other way too? And that's because he's using those back teeth to grind, those molars in the back. Now I've got a big horse at the bottom with a halter on that's got a big mouth full of hay. 
You see how dry that hay is though, but that's where it's getting a lot of its calories, a lot of its energy. So that horse has to keep eating and eating and eating. That's why they're grazing and they're eating pretty much all the time because they have to get a lot of calories in and the grass doesn't have much. Now on the right, you see these donkeys or these mules, they're opening their lips so they can get a carrot. And that's so you can see their teeth. You see how they do have teeth on the top and the bottom. So I can look at the pastures that I see going down Mission Boulevard and I can tell if there are cows on it or if there are horses on it from the amount of grass that's left. The cows can't take as much. The horses actually, because they have teeth on top, will take the whole root of grass and all out. All right, so again, those are plant eaters, those herbivores that are grinding. And now we've got our omnivores. Now our omnivores, let's look at this chimpanzee on the left. Do you see its incisors, the little ones in the front? And you see its big canines? And then it also has molars in the back. Now look at this baboon on the bottom. Now they have super big teeth and that's a lot for territory, for fighting, um, other than just eating, okay? So they do have to use those teeth to defend themselves. We don't have them as long because we have our minds that have helped us to figure out how to defend ourselves and how to get along with people, right? Because it's never polite to bite somebody, is it? No, that's never good. All right, and even our bear. Bears eat mostly plants, but in the early springtime, they do love to eat fish. Look at this bear, he keeps catching it. And if he didn't have these big canines and all he'd be, he would lose that wiggly fish. Okay, let's go open your mouth, get ready to catch the fish. Let's see if you can catch it. Oh, did you catch it? Oh, it's so tricky. Look at how wiggly that fish is. So again, certain times of the year, the bears do like to eat their protein. All right, so again, we are talking about animals today that have those backbones, that have the vertebrates, and we're including you in that group. So remember I talked about how you could feel the vertebrates along your neck and along the back, and I showed you this from the deer, the chordata. This is again, those, it's kind of like Legos where they stack these vertebrae all on top, and all of these different animals, their teeth, determine whether they eat plants, meat, or a little bit of everything, even fish. Have you ever thought about that for fish? You think fish have teeth? Sure they do. Have you guys seen Shark Week? Sharks have teeth. My killer whale that I had earlier too, that's got sharks. That's got, that's got the teeth. It's a little different. All right. So all again, these animals that we see here, these fish, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and birds all have teeth. Remember my rooster? This is our one exception. Birds don't have any teeth. We're gonna talk about him in a minute. How about um, when it comes to a turtle? We're gonna see in just a minute here, I've got a puppet of a turtle. Now remember a turtle cannot leave its shell. Its shell is part of its backbone. Its ribs and its backbone are included in the shell. It can pull its head and its legs in like that for a little bit of protection. And it relies on that hard shell for protection. All right, um, how about, let's see. Oh, here's a red tailed hawk. Okay, a red-tailed hawk again is tricky. What type of animal is this? You guys have any idea? Is it a fish? Is it an amphibian? Is it a reptile? Is it a mammal? Is it a bird? It's a bird. So this one again doesn't have any teeth. It just has a sharp beak. All right. So four of our animal types are mammals, are reptiles, amphibian, and fish. Those all have teeth. Again, we're talking about animals with vertebrae, with our backbone, that usually have teeth. So you see a big picture here of an elephant. Look at that elephant's big skull. And how about the 
alligator, definitely lots of big teeth. The amphibian, that's like a frog. They have teeth on their top row, their top jaw. And look at that fish. I think that's a guard. You see those tiny little teeth in that fish? Those are some tiny little teeth, but it would help that fish survive. Okay, the only one that doesn't have teeth are the birds. Birds don't have teeth. They have beaks or bills. And if you look at these pictures, you can see especially kind of this orange one towards the bottom. They have these little kind of like a reel that, that's a edge that's kind of serrated or sharp. And that's kind of how it helps hold on to um, its prey or eat some of its plants, how to tear things up. All right, so again, a bill is usually like these that you see here. It's more flat and a beak usually has more of a hook on it. This is more of the beak. So this is a bald eagle on the left with the white head. You see the difference? You see how that's big? So it can actually use that sharp, almost like a knife. That funny bird to the right, that's a shoebill stork. And it too, even though its beak is very large, it also has a very sharp point on the end. And it could use that sharp point to kill its prey even though it's a much bigger mouth. It's called a shoe bill because it kind of looks like a shoe, doesn't it? The beak, it's so big. All right, so this is a closer look at beaks. We've got a couple different ones here. Let's look at this beak. Oh, there you go. You see why it's a beak? See the sharp rounded? There's that golden eagle that's got the sharp rounded. Oh, even flying yet. Yeah, you see the big talons? So that would help catch its prey too, but you see that sharp curved beak. So very different than a duck. A duck has a flat bill, but these birds of prey have a sharp beak. All right, so a little different. Now, some animals have modified teeth or special teeth. And that would be things like the elephant with those big ivory tusks and the hippopotamus has those big, um, sometimes they're the incisors that are going all over. And look at that picture of the pig or the boar. Now, every time that boar opens and closes its mouth, those teeth are sharpening, those canines are sharpening on themselves. But these special teeth and the, and the fish or the mammal that you see there, the narwhal, it's like a tooth, feel your front tooth, like the, the front of your gums. How about if this tooth, went, grew straight out through your gum. That's what's happening with the narwhal. It grows straight out. That's kind of crazy. So all of these, again, are made of special ivory. All right, so here's a closer look at this hippopotamus. Look, it's got crazy incisors and canines going everywhere. But do you still see the incisors in the front there, even though they're growing long? And it's got some bigger canines that are growing. But in the back, remember, it's a plant eater. So they're, they've got all those grinders in the back. Now, here's a closer look at some wild pigs or some wild boars. These are some warthogs. And again, look at them eating up this apple thing here. And look at those tusks. Do you think they need those for eating? Sure, they would use those for digging up to find food, but they're really more for protection, like for fighting off predators. Um, and again, look how they, every time he opens and closes his mouth, see how they have to mash just right and they keep sharpening. All right. So again, those are special kinds of teeth. And here's our last one, the elephant with the tusks. Now look, this is a very old elephant. Its tusks are so large. Don't they look heavy? Well, they're very strong animals though. They would use those long tusks to, for example, move that tree over. If they needed to get to a water source, they could use those for digging. They could use it for moving things out of the way. They could use it also for defense and for eating. So again, that is a specialized tooth that is made of ivory. 
And so unfortunately, many of these animals that I just showed you are have had a hard time. They're threatened or close to being extinct because people like that ivory to be able to carve. And that's kind of a waste of an animal's life. So we're trying to stop that ivory trade um, because that animal needs that tusk to be able to live. They can't live without them. Now this elephant too, it's a plant eater. So it has big molars in the back. And what's really cool about the elephant is that it has six sets. It gets six sets of teeth in its mouth of four big molars. And when those molars wear out, then they get a new set, but they only have six. They're kind of a lot like our mastodons and our mammoths. They're pretty cool. All right, now here's that narwhal I was talking about. How if you had a tooth that was growing straight out your gum like this, that's crazy, isn't it? What's also funny is that the narwhal's tooth, that, that it's kind of a backwards tooth. It's more sensitive on the outside than on the inside. So it uses this tusk and even though it's long, it can be six to eight feet long, it can also bend. So they use it to help find food. They also use it to spear and, or kind of hit their prey to be able to stun the fish and things that they want to eat. So isn't that kind of crazy? But that's the narwhal, it's just the enlarged tooth. And again, it's real sensitive, got lots of nerves more on the outside. Now, again, some animals don't have any teeth though. And those are like our turtles. They have what we call, you see how it's just got the sharp edges. Sometimes we call those turtles a beak as well. So it's just a strong jaw. See how quick he can break that. What would happen if you put your finger up there? A snapping turtle could easily break your finger. They're very strong. All right, we also have whales, baleen whales that do not have teeth. They have a, a structure, it's more like a comb. And what they do is if you can imagine eating say chicken noodle soup and you take a whole mouthful of chicken noodle soup and then you use your tongue and you force all that liquid out through your teeth, right? You would catch all of the noodles and the vegetables in your teeth and you'd get rid of the liquid. That's what's happening here. So this baleen whale is getting a mouthful of seawater and all these krill that are kind of like little shrimp. And then they spit out the water and all the little krill are stuck in that comb of the baleen. Even though it's the largest mammal, it eats tiny little critters. And then here's another animal that doesn't have any teeth either. This anteater, it just picks up its food with its tongue. It doesn't have any teeth. That's kind of crazy, huh? Look at how long that mouth is. But that long tongue, it's looking for ants and termites and it'll eat like 35, thousand ants or termites in a day. So it's busy just licking and licking and licking. That's pretty cool. All right, here's a quick storybook on working on the food chain. And this is one that if you wanted to reread on our website, you could. Here we go. Working on the Food Chain by Cassie Fries, animated by Doris Rea and Hagos Tavolti. Producers are organisms that make food on their own. It's through photosynthesis that plants can be grown. Plants use the sun's energy to convert minerals in the land. When it comes to feeding animals, producers give a helping hand. Zelda the zebra munches on shrubs and green grass. Zelda is a herbivore. It's a plant eater's class. An animal as a hyena likes plants and meat. A black and white zebra would be such a treat. <laughs> Harry the hyena called an omnivore. He needs to be careful when he hears a lion's roar. Larry the lion, a fierce eating carnivore, has a diet of meat and nothing more. When animals die, their bodies decay. 
decomposers and scavengers feed on what lays. As the animal's remains are broken down into pieces, the soil receives nutrients from decomposes feces. The cycle of life is called a food chain, and hunting can be a dangerous game. Animals eat other animals in order to survive. If one animal is extinct, what will keep others alive? If too many animals die, the chains can break, and the other animals' lives will be at stake. The end. Would you like to hear a joke? Wildebeest, or new, the new is a major prey species for many of the large predators, including lions, cheaters, and wild dogs. Guess what? What? No news is bad news. Did you get that? So if there's no, there aren't any news to eat, then the lions are going to be very hungry. All right. So again, we've got our three types of, of eaters, our carnivores and our herbivores and our omnivores. And if you look at this picture, Again, we've got to have lots of things on the very bottom. We have lots, need to have lots of our plants. Because those, if we don't have enough plants, then we don't have enough for our first round of consumers. And then our predators are going to eat those. And then the top predators, like in this picture, the shark, um, they need everything else to eat. So if just one part of this falls apart, then that affects the whole food chain. So just to review, Remember, an herbivore is an animal that eats mostly a plant diet. We call it a vegetarian diet. Things like our elephants, our deers, rabbit, horse, camel, those are herbivores. In fact, I have a camel jaw here, just so you can see. Again, the teeth, these are the molars, and you can see how they are grinders. They are great at grinding that food. All right, so then we also have our carnivores. Those are our meat eaters, right? Whether it's a live or dead animal that's already dead, they're eating other animals. So things like our hyenas and our lions, oh, our alligators, our crocodiles, our wolves, those are all your carnivores. And then we have our omnivores, our foxes, our pigs, and even you. Again, it's designed by your teeth. You can choose to eat these different foods, but again, by your design of your teeth, you have the incisors that are for cutting. You have the, car the canines that are for piercing and stabbing. And you have the grinders, your molars for grinding things up. So you can eat a little bit of everything. Okay, so again, we have been talking about our types of teeth, our incisors in the front, our canines, and our molars. Now, one thing that we wanna do to keep them all healthy is to have good dental habits. One of the most important is to brush with a soft, bristled toothbrush, okay? So if you brush and floss two times a day for two minutes each, but make sure you use a soft bristled brush. If you use a hard bristle, that can actually damage your teeth. And then you want to use a toothpaste that has fluoride in it, okay? Fluoride, again, is gonna help protect your teeth. And they're all different flavors. That's what makes it fun. And now flossing is important because you get food stuck in between your teeth that only the floss can get out. If that stays in there, then the plaque builds up. And what happens is when the little bacteria, there's bad bacteria that builds up. And when it poops, it's releasing an acid. And that's what eats away your enamel. So one experiment you can do is for one night, not brush your teeth. And in the next morning, if you'd run your tongue over, you're going to feel like it's kind of fuzzy, like your teeth are fuzzy. Well, that's where the plaque is building up, okay? And again, 
over a long time, that would cause a lot of damage to your teeth. So you want to eat a lot of um, not so much processed food because again, that's where the sugar comes in. So eat less sugar, more real foods, not as processed foods, um, harder foods, and that'll keep your teeth healthy.